Hello, uh, Western Civ 104. Welcome to week 11. And I'm um, sorry I put out this announcement a little bit later than uh, usual, but this week I've been distracted. I think we've all been distracted. And uh, it's clear, no matter what, that um, the country's pretty divided, right? So, in any case, um, I think that going over the plague this uh, week is a nice fitting way to kind of uh, encapsulate the feelings and the sentiments and the emotions that we can all be dealing with right w right now along with the fact that we are currently going through the uh, covid uh, crisis but i just wanted to add a few things because when i first put this uh, uh when, when went over the section Last semester, it was really the start of dealing with this, the, the lockdown situations and, and people, no one knew what to expect. And now um, we're, we're at an interesting point where um, we have a good p large portion of the population that doesn't believe that coronavirus is real when we have a huge death toll that's been documented. My uncle died of coronavirus not long ago and my cousin and may he rest in peace my, my cousin she is a nurse in the hospital that he was working that, that he was in and she saw his lungs and what coronavirus does to the lungs it just fills it up with like junk and it basically chokes you out he died very quickly now my uncle was overweight uh he was in assisted living and he was, uh, I believe, in the 70s. So he was at risk, right? In that, cat in the, in that category. Um, but my cousin talked about how uh, that it's such a strange thing. It's not like the bubonic plague. Many people come in to the hospital and she says they have a coronavirus and it's like a very, like just a light sore throat, some yeah, at worst. Um, but that person with a light sore throat is probably the kind of person that sent this to my uncle and it killed him. And that's the crisis that we're dealing with. A lot of people uh, um, are getting it and being okay, but then a lot aren't. And it's, it's a lot, uh, the targeting areas seem to be mainly in vulnerable communities. So you get a lot of younger people having parties and living life as normal and, uh, uh, you know, uh, raves and just doing things like normal and going, hey, nothing's going on. And uh, yet it's also helped facilitating the spread. And at the same time, there's some people that are taking it so extreme that they're isolating themselves so much that they're literally going crazy. It's, it's, it's a very difficult and complicated thing. And if we just see how, you know, the that our own president got it and the way that he responded to it and what's going on now. Um, we could do a whole set of comments on that, but I don't want to get into that. I merely wanted to point out that history in a weird way, uh, uh, it always informs us of things to look into. And what we see is that just like the plague became political and theological in, in terms of discussion and social and people look for scapegoats and, and all the societal tensions that, that came about with the plague. Think about how politicized COVID has become in this country. And it's been doing that in other countries as well. And what's interesting is Americans always, you know, we always think of everything through the lens of just what's happening here and disregard the fact that it's happening in many other places and some people are handling it very well. New Zealand is pretty much COVID free mainly and they live normal lives. Okay, and they're one of the few countries doing it. And why we're not focusing on trying to emulate them, I don't know. I know they're smaller than us, but I mean, I don't know, come on. Taiwan has been relatively doing well and so has Singapore. Um, and um, Hong Kong has been w doing way better than us, uh, uh, at least in this regard, not other things. Uh, I, I have friends in Hong Kong and I, I used to uh, stay there for about three months the cafes that I've went to pretty much have always remained open. They've just had policies about social distancing and masks and so forth that for some reason, many Americans can't handle even doing that. Uh, um, in any case, uh, here we are to look at all of this. 
And so I just want to say a few things since we covered Iceland and, and uh, uh, Norse mythology and all that last uh, week or previously, <laughs> uh, two weeks ago, I think. Um, there's an interesting Icelandic word. There's two interesting Icelandic expressions that I just want to say in regards to where America is at at this time in our history and not just through the election, but uh, there. The word for stupid, and it's not a word, I don't like that word stupid, and I'm not calling anybody here stupid. I, I want to make a point about the word, though, in Icelandic, and it's heimskr. Heim, Icelandic is a Germanic language, and English is a Germanic language. We're re, so we have similar words in some cases. So heim and home obviously sound similar. Then you have the suffix skr. It means uh, basically home home bodied or, 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 or bound to home or, or uh, from home okay so when you when you're when you're upset at somebody for for doing something or saying something that you consider ignorant or stupid you'd say that's hamsker from home that's from home now what what does that mean i like it because i feel like it's more of an explanation than an insult although i don't know exactly if that's just how icelanders think of it um but uh, you can be hyper intelligent if you are just from home, or if you're just in a limited uh, area. Rather geographically, you're stuck, which is no to no fault of your own. Or you just don't explore outside your comfort zones of your ideas. Then you will have limited exposure to what you experience in life, minimum exposure to ideas. And you will be limited in your understanding about life outside of your own home. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? And I think that, you know, we in the United States, we have uh, algorithms on our Internet that, that give us our own echo chambers of our own political views. Uh, uh, and so we're only seeing those. Uh, we have media that feeds us a particular point of view. And we are a big country and we don't pay attention to the rest of the world, even though that we're really dominating the, the world. I mean, militarily, and we are an imperial power. And yet many of us remain from home in our views about many things. We have limited scope and we're all susceptible to that. And that includes myself. And so I was thinking about that in terms of the fact that we know that no matter who wins this election, that the other half of America is going to be extremely upset. And because we're not united, we're not seeing the world the same way. We probably all need to break out of our homes a little bit, our, our framework, and start understanding how and why we, we are at this place that we're at. Um, and then I just want to say on a positive note, there's another Icelandic expression I like, and it's, it's Þetarreddas. Þetarreddas, and by the way, if anybody's Icelandic, I'm sorry if I'm not saying this uh, precise in my pr pronunciations, but that the red dust is in the end, it's all going to work out. And it's not a belief in, I think, in fate as much as a mental determination to get you to where you need to go and to get to that place, right? And so I feel if we can break away from being Hamsker and we can move towards making a better environment for everyone, we can do there. That the red dust. In the end, it, it can work out for the benefit, for the better. And look, even with the bubonic plague and all these terrible things we're seeing in history, our ancestors got us here. Every one of us alive have ancestors that went through tremendous amount of warfares, plagues, earthquakes, uh, typhoons, tornadoes, all of the things that you've ever seen in human history. And all of us alive are the ones well, our ancestors got us here, okay? And right now, we have to think about, though, there is a global environmental crisis that could limit that possibility. There's a lot of things to take serious. So let's expand our horizons, and let's uh, actually uh, do some deep soul searching. And at the end of the day, sometimes we also have to draw lines in the sand, and, and I hope that our country can uh, uh, work through that um, in a non-physical confrontational way. 
All right, folks. Have a great week. Uh, um, and um, if we need anything, let's be in touch. I'm going to go get a tooth pulled in about an hour or two. And uh, anyways, yep, that's what's going to happen. And uh, yep, we'll be in touch.